In this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up native LSP for NeoVim. So as always you'll be able to find all the configuration over on my blog um, along with an explanation for how this all works. Um, you can also check out my NeoVim config over on my GitHub. Feel free to just you know take inspiration from it or um, you know you could just use it. Um, we're going to be looking at two plugins today after I kind of look, uh, show you guys like how this all works. Uh, one of them will be NVIM LSP config and the other one will be NVIM compi. Alright, so first before I get started like explaining all of this stuff, um, I'm just going to show you what you're going to be getting at the end of this video if you follow through with the, um, if you follow through with the setup. So the first thing, and we're going to be looking at things like code actions, we're going to be looking at uh, navigating your project, um, or navigating at project scope, not just the file scope. Uh, we're going to be looking at autocomplete, and we're going to be looking at diagnostics. Alright, so the first thing I'll do is go to definition. So we see this thing header here, it's a component in React, you can kind of think of it like a class but I want to see where it's instantiated. So what I'll do is over top of it, I'll just press GD. All right, and what I can do to go back would be Control O. So now over this header, it'll take me to the same place if I do GD. Um, you could even go and look at React, like the actual source code for React if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, so you can just go to definition pretty much of whatever you see. Um, the next thing we'll do is GR, and what GR will give us is go to reference. So I just did that. Layout is uh, used all over this project. So now you can see down here in the quick fix window um, all the places where layout is used. All right, so we'll just press enter. This is one of the places it's used. And we'll press control O to go back. If you want to close this quick fix window, you just want to put C close. All right, so the next thing I'll show you guys is autocomplete. So we'll do something like console dot log and you can see it just comes up with everything you can even see this little message here um, just kind of like explaining what it is I guess uh, that doesn't always come up it's a little bit um, here and there with getting that message to come up and I'm assuming that'll kind of be fixed and ironed out later uh, but yeah so that's the auto completion there uh, some other auto completion that we can get because that's the LSP auto completion but we can get um, auto completion from all over the place we can get it from like snippets uh, spellings, all different kinds of stuff, right? So like, if I come over here and uh, we'll just try and spell something, try and spell something like uh, learn, learning, right? Now it'll come up with the buffer first and now you can see learn is a spell and then if I put like learning, you can see it gets it from spell, right? Uh, same with like implementation, that's kind of a hard word to spell, I guess. Um, now it's getting it right from the buffer, so it's kind of cheating, but I wonder when the spelling will come up. But you can see all these spelling things here, like implement at, implement eight, right? Um, and it'll even try and fix it, like if you misspell something, like that's not right, right? But if I put something in there, it'll think like, maybe you mean something else, right? So that's just another example of kind of like how autocomplete can work. All right, so that's autocomplete. Now we'll look at some diagnostics. So we'll come over here, let's add something up here, like FA. Uh, I don't know, something like this, right? And you can see how it found that with autocomplete or with autocomplete too, right? Like you can see like, okay, it, it knows about all of the um, font awesome icons inside of this library. All right, but it also knows I'm not using this one and that's a diagnostic right there. Uh, you can also see that little light bulb and that's kind of letting you know that you have a code action available. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. So let's see. What we can do here. We can um, also get rid of something like one of these and we can see that we have a bunch of diagnostics that are actual errors down here in red. Now if you want to cycle through all of the errors and all the diagnostics in general um, I have a key binding for control N to go forwards and control P to go backwards so control N will just take us through our diagnostics here and control P will take us backwards through our diagnostics. Um, so let's fix that again. Now another thing we can do up here is uh, code action, right? So what you can do, and I have this kind of like built-in helper on top of it, but we can do a code action. Now these are wrappers that I've kind of written, uh, like, let's see, L 
plus P and tab. Um, and you can see them on my new, on, on my, uh, in my config. Um, but like, it's, it's kind of like you have to call Lua and a bunch of stuff. I'll, I'll show you guys like how to set it up in a minute. But so if we call a code action on top of this, it'll say like, okay, remove unused declaration for FA Airbnb. I can press one and it'll do it, right? Now I'll put it back just really fast. Um, and I'm not gonna be going over this plugin in this video, but I'll show you another one. What you can do is you can do this and you can kind of see like where a lot of the NeoVim, like some cr pretty creative people making plugins. This one's called LSP Saga. And uh, we can just like see this nice uh, pop-up window under it, and I can press enter and get rid of it like that. All right, could also just delete it. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for kind of giving you a demo of like what you're getting out of this. You can see how it like kind of, you know, replaces um, things like COC or at least it's a pretty decent um, LSP client just to get started. And it doesn't really need a whole lot. And it's also has the added a benefit. It has the added benefit of being built into NeoVim, right? All right, so I'll disable that. Now, I wanted to talk about like kind of how to set all of this stuff up um, and you know what this LSP is and kind of what it isn't and what you'll need to do to get it working. So NeoVim 0.5 will be shipping with an API for language server protocol. And language server protocol is essentially like a way for all languages to implement a, the same protocol for all text editors and IDEs to use so that you can get like, so like it's a common interface, right? So that they can all provide things like autocomplete, um, you know, uh, linting and all that kind of good stuff, code actions, whatever. And if they're all providing it the same way, then all of these text editors and IDEs can, you know, just consume it all the same way. And then it's just really easy to use it across things like NeoVim, VS Code, um, and Emacs, and so on and so forth, right? Like all the big text editors and IDEs. All right. So I would recommend uh, moving over to uh, the native LSP over something like COC. Just because it's built in, um, it's made by the NeoVim core team. So, you know, like as long as NeoVim is going to be around, this will be here. And you know, a lot of people are probably going to shift focus onto this uh, pretty soon, as soon as uh, NeoVim 0.5 is the in, in like the master stable branch, right? And that'll probably be pretty soon. I think they're supposed to release it in four days, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, one thing to note is that the built in LSP is very general. Um, in, in NeoVim itself. So don't expect everything to kind of work out of the box. That's what these plugins are down here for. Um, now, hopefully this blog will kind of help you uh, get started and understand how all this stuff works. Now, at any moment, you can also do H LSP and you can get a bunch of help for LSP. This is kind of a deeper dive than probably a lot of you want to go for, but you know, you can check it out. I found some interesting stuff like formatting in here and you know, um, just different functions that I might not have known about otherwise. All right, so the two plugins we're gonna be looking at are LSP Config and LSP, or, or, or NVIM Compi. And this one will give us the autocomplete you saw earlier, and the LSP Config will essentially give us um, like all of the server configurations that I'll show you at the end. Um, so to get started, Let's go look at some of my documentation. Whoops. And let's close these windows. All right. So you can see that I brought them in through Vimplug. If we look up Compi here, I have LSP config and Compi. You can ignore pretty much all the other plugins. They're not really um, relevant to this video. I did show you guys Saga, a little bit of Saga uh, earlier. All right, so we'll go back over here. Now you see this first configuration file after setting it up. Now this stuff is really just built into NeoVim. Um, obviously you're gonna need to have the LSP set up through LSP config, but you already have access to these commands here. So let's go and look at LSP config here. And this is just like a Vim file that I have um, for, uh, for just configuring this. Uh, you could also do it in Lua if you wanted to. But this is how I was doing the GD 
for go to definition earlier. Uh, we also have go to declaration, go to reference, you saw that earlier, implementation, hover, I don't know if I showed hover, but essentially hover, you know, you just press a capital K over top of something, like it'll say like over NNO remap here. Um, you know, it's like no remap, but for normal mode, right? Like I, no remap would be for um, insert mode. Uh, so there's also signature help, and then both of these guys, control P and control N. I showed that earlier when I was jumping through uh, diagnostics. Uh, we also have auto format. Now, this didn't work out of the box for Python, but it did work for JS, uh, for JavaScript, uh, JSX. I don't know if I showed you guys that earlier. Um, I can, though, really fast. Uh, we'll just open up one of these and we'll show that really fast. So if I put that big space there um, and I save, that should have worked. I wonder why it didn't. Oh, I didn't save, that's why. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's like that auto format working. Uh, we'll go back over here. And so that's the auto format here. And those were all the commands that I showed earlier. All right, now the other thing will be for, uh, and we'll just come over here, down back to init.vim, and I'll show you guys compy. So compy, all right. So this is a Lua file, right? And you can probably see like over here, I brought it in with Lua file and then pointing to it here, uh, compy-config.lua. Right, and so a lot of NeoVim is going to be Lua in the future, so you might want to kind of get familiar with uh, with Lua in general here. Uh, but anyway, so you can see like the source paths, or just the source source <laughs> that I showed earlier. I showed you guys. I didn't probably didn't show you guys path, but like if I go like this slash, you can kind of see like oh these are directories like bin is it slash home so on and so forth, right? Um, buffer, you probably saw that earlier. I think, I don't know if calc will work for me. Like if I do one plus one. Yeah, I mean, see, it finds out that it's two, just like that, right? Uh, snippets, uh, obviously, nvim lsp, and you saw spelling. It's also tree sitter, too. And by the way, tree sitter is kind of what's given me all of this really good syntax highlighting along with my uh, color scheme. So I also recommend checking that out. I'll probably do a video on that in the future. All right, so this is essentially just the base configuration. You can actually find it over here in Compi, right? So it's pretty much just this, right? There's not much else. Uh, they also have some other things you can add uh, just to like kind of be able to cycle through things with tabs. So if I like start to type, I can go like this, or I can do Shift Tab to go backwards and Tab to go forwards. Also, you know, Control J down and Control K up. All right. So we'll come back over here, and you're just going to need this file to set up autocomplete. All right. Now we're going to talk about setting up language servers. Now this is what's in charge of setting up language servers. Uh, that's nvim lsp config, right? And I showed you that one earlier as well. Um, so there's not really much you have to do to configure this plugin here per se, but you do have to like configure the language servers, right? So for instance, let's go back over here, right? And say I wanted to set up the Python language server, right? The first thing that I'm going to need to do is install a binary uh, for the language server. So npm i, and i stands for install, flag g for global and then Pyrite, that's the name of the actual language server, and it's provided through uh, Node Package Manager NPM, right? Um, a lot of them are provided through NPM. Um, a lot of this stuff comes from a lot of JavaScript developers, believe it or not, people who built this stuff into VS Code. Uh, but so, so since a lot of them are just through NPM, it's like really simple to get the binaries, and you can tell they're binaries because you could just type Pyrite, and there you go, right? And that's what this thing needs. It needs a binary like that um, to work. Like if same for the bash, lang bash language server, uh, you can just press like start and that'll be working. And so that's what this thing's actually doing behind the scenes is it's starting up one of these binaries and then it's providing all the things like autocomplete and linting through that. All right, so after installing that, all you're gonna need to do 
is require it. So we'll go over here. You can name the file whatever you want, but it's literally the simplest file ever. You just have to have this. Like that's really it, right? You don't really have to do anything else besides this. Uh, if you want some special setup or something like that, you can pass some configuration into the setup function here. Uh, probably a lot of people will just use whatever comes out of the box though, right? Um, those are ones for like that are easy to install through NPM. Some of them are not so easy to install, like Java, like uh, JDTLS, uh, the Java Eclipse language server, right? Uh, that one is not super easy to install. There's other ones that are not super easy to install too, but most are. And you can see that. So if we're here, right? If you come down, you're, you're going to see a link somewhere to config.md here. All right. And you can see what, and I think I have this link in my blog too, but you can see all of the language servers that LSP config, um, like it supports, right? Like kind of out of the box. You'll notice a lot of them are through NPM. Like you can just NPM install them. Like this one here uh, for CSS. Um, go down, look through a few other ones. Docker comes in through NPM. Uh, Elixir, I guess, doesn't, right? So there's a bunch of them in here. Some of them come down, a, a good amount of them you can install through NPM. Uh, but you can kind of just, you know, however you need to do it. They're going to leave you some documentation here so you can kind of figure it out. GraphQL is also NPM. I know Bash is NPM, Python's NPM. So a lot of them are easy. All right. So after you have it set up, um, I mean, that's really kind of it. Like you don't really need to do anything else besides that, right? So once that's there and once you have it installed, it should just work pretty much, right? After you have all of that configuration done, uh, like all of this completion configuration and all that, it should just work. Um, so I left a couple other links here. So this is the link to the language servers that I just showed you. Uh, this one is for language specific plugins. So like there's probably gonna be some wrappers, especially for more complicated ones for like Java. Um, you know, there. So like this one's for JDTLS, Flutter tools, you know, that's probably a little bit more difficult to do. So there's like another layer, right? Um, it's also, if you want to enable snippets, I left a link here. And then for plugins that will hopefully be easy. Yeah. So essentially what this is, is it's a plugin to hopefully make installing this stuff easier for you in the future. So if you want to use this plugin, uh, it'll give you a few out of the box, right? Probably a lot of the easier ones that can come down with like NPM, right? So um, Bash, um, CMake, CSS, Docker, Elm, you can see that they support a good amount of things. So if the languages you use are just right here, you could probably just use this and then just MP uh, LSP install it and you don't have to go through the steps that I showed earlier. Um, you can see that, you know, they have kind of like a, uh, a list here that hopefully they're going to check off all the boxes. It'd be kind of cool if this thing did work and then you could just like install everything you needed. Um, even the difficult ones, that would be, that would be really cool if that worked in the future. But you got to remember using, uh, the LSP for, for, um, for the newest version of NeoVim, the one where there aren't really a lot of plugins yet. I mean, you're kind of on the bleeding edge here, right? All right. So let's come back come back. I also left some links for the plugins here uh, so you can kind of check them out. Uh, uh, LSP config and NVIM compi. Now I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, you can check me out over on Twitter. Uh, there's a link to my GitHub here on my website. Obviously my YouTube. Uh, you can ask questions over in the Discord and you can donate on Patreon. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.